Uh, let's say I want to go uh, from 0 0.2 and I want to turn this into a fraction. Thank you so much for writing this down. 0 0.2, let's go ahead and write this down. Now, what is another way of saying um, 0 0.2? Okay, what's another way of saying this? Yes, sir? 0 and 2 tenths. 0 and 2 tenths, or just straight up calling it 2 tenths. Two tenths all right? So, I could call this 2 tenths, but then how could I write 2 tenths? All right? Thoughts on that? I agree with that statement. And so therefore, we have just written this as two tenths. Now, some of you may look at this and be like, how did they even do that? That's magic, all right? And be like, oh, oh, it's magic, you know. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, so um, the idea is that um, when we're talking about place value, this is called the what place value. We know it as the tenths, tenths all right? Tenths. Okay, so this is the tenths place, and that actually tells us what our denominator is going to be. We are kacha. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right. So, but now I try to wonder: Can I simplify two tenths? Is there a number that goes into both two and ten? Yes, sir. Two. Two. So, how many twos can I find in two? One. one. Yeah, yes, one. Five. And how many uh, twos five. can I find in ten? Five. five. Now, I may have asked. I may have asked that in a very confusing way, and I apologize for that. Another, another way I could have said, what is 2 divided by 2? And it is? One. And 10 divided by 2 is? Five. 5. And so therefore, uh, 2 tenths as a decimal is actually 1 fifth as a fraction. Okay? Doing okay? Yeah. yeah. All right? Nobody's freaking out? All right. So let's say, so let's say I had a number, a different number. Let's say I had, um, let's say I had something like, 0 0.13. Okay? Yeah, let's write that down. That's a good idea. Okay, so now I'm at 0 0.13. Is there another way I could read this decimal? Yes, sir? Uh, 13. How did you come up with 13 hundredths? Because the. Sorry, you're explaining that. I'm making all this noise. Go ahead, do that again. Right, because we have tenths, and we have hundredths. Ooh. All right, hundredths. Okay, so I would write this as 13 hundredths. And that's going to be my denominator. Boom! This is my denominator. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so then moving from there, I ask, is there a number that goes in both 13 and 100? Yes, sir. There kind of is, but we don't really need to do it. It's the number one. one. But we could divide by one, and we'd end up with the same thing. And then do it again, and do it again, and do it again. And then we can impress our friends and all those kind of things. Look, I can divide by one. All right, so. Um, and they'd be like, ha, 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 yeah, yeah. All right, so. Um, great. So far, is that making sense? Yes. All right, so let's say I took a number like um, three uh, point, and let's go with uh, 45. Okay? Great, 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 great. All right, now, instead of having a zero, I've got a three. I've got a whole number. Three, thoughts? It would like change it into a mixed number. Into a mixed number, and how would I write this mixed number? Three and 45 hundredths. Oh, you write it as three and 45 hundredths. Notice that we have the tenths hundredths, that's why we have the 45 up top and the hundred. We have the 45 up top and the hundredths down below. And then we just carry over our whole number. It's still a whole number of three, still a whole number of three. Because we would read this as three and 45 hundredths. And this is read as three and 45 hundredths. Have we changed anything? No. 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 Is this simplest form? No. no. Is there a number that goes into both 45 and 100? Have a discussion with your group right now. Have a communication. Five. Communication. Five. Communication. All right? All right, so I, I hear this creepy number, and that number was five. five. All right, so I heard uh, that was five, and so what should I then do? Okay, yes, sir? Divide 45 by five, which is nine. Boy, just do spoiler alert. And also 100 <laughs> divided by five. And 100 divided by five, and let me just let you do that now. Can you guys go to go ahead and little, 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 write it out, write it out, long divide. Long divide, I'd like you to go ahead and divide 5 into 100. Do that now. 
do that now. Do it. Like write it and do it and write it and do it and write it and do it and write it and do it. All right. Great. And high five. Yes, sir. It's twenty. Anybody else get twenty? All right. Feeling good about life? All right. So we end up. Oh, can I reduce nine twenty and any further? Is there still a number that goes into both of those two? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. Yes, no, 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 yes? No? No? Huh? One? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is simplest form. Simplest form. And that's what you want. That's what you want. But wait a second. What if I went big? What if I went even bigger? All right? And so let's say I went ahead and said I had a number like, I don't know. Let's say I had 5.256. All right? And I should not read it as 5.256. I should read it as, I should read it as, thousands, because we went tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. Okay? Does that help us in creating a fraction? And if so, go ahead and create that beautiful fraction. Make that fraction happen. Make that fraction happen. Make that fraction happen. Love it. Love it. That's not my beat, bro. <laughs> I mean, that is a beat. That's just not my beat. All right. Okay? You're like, I don't like your beat. All right, so. So we're at five and how do we do this? How do we do this? How do we? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, thousands, just a thousand would be the denominator. That is correct. One thousand would be the denominator. And um, 256 would be the numerator. 256 would be the numerator. And then we have to think, and it's like extremely obvious. Yes, greatest common factor. That goes into idea. Don't give out the answer, please. Um, the, uh, that was sarcasm, extremely obvious. Um, so uh, we have to actually solve for what is a number that goes into both 256 and 1,000. There are two different ways of doing this. One of those ways is doing the greatest common factor that we had done before doing factor trees. That is one way of doing this. Okay? I see you grimacing. I see you, and a grimace is this face. Okay, for those of you listening at home or stuff, the grimace is this this face. Uh, all right, uh, all right, the, the, all right. It's very cosmopolitan. All right, so which means like worldly. All right. Anyway, so and then maybe give the number a <laughs> math people stay focused. So the idea is that we're trying to figure out what is uh, a common common factor or the greatest common factor of both of these numbers. Okay, like I said, you could do factor tree. And so let's just go ahead and do a practice of that, busting that out. So I'm looking at 256 and 1,000, okay? So one way is do factor trees, all right? So what's the number that goes into both 256 and 1,000? I mean, two, I'm sorry, what's the number that goes into 256? Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, 128. So I could go 2 times 128. And then break 128 into 2 times 64. 64. And then break that into 2 times 32. And I could break that into 2 times 16. 16. I know I'm pushing you pretty quick. And I could break this into 2 times 8. Into 2 times 4. Into 2 times 2. Holy tacos. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight twos to the eighth power. Oh, that's a lot. All right. Now I'm just gonna leave that on pause for now. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? I'll leave this visible so you can go ahead and write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Okay. That hopefully is visible. Now we're gonna break apart a thousand. And thoughts for a thousand. You can do five. Sure, why not? Two and five hundred. Or I could just do five times a hundred. Or whatever. Yeah. What was it? Two and two. Two and two fifty. Let's go for it. One twenty-five and two. Oh, I'm running out of space. All right. Can you even see that? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You're okay. It does look like a weird V thing. It yes, that's it. It does. I, I apologize. Next, how do how can I break one twenty five? Five and twenty five. Five and twenty five. Whoa! Good job. Five and five. 
And then how do I break 25? Five and five. Five and five. Okay, now I don't know if you remember how we bust out uh, greatest common factor. Greatest common factor is you try to find what matches. You guys remember that? It's got a match on both sides for it to be to go GCF. All right? So, greatest common factor. I have a two here. Do I have a two on the other side? Yeah. Boom! Do I have, a two? I have a two here? Do I have a two on the other side? Yeah. Boom! I have a two here. Do I have a two on the other side? Yeah. Boom! I have a two here. Do I have a two? No, no. Do I have f fives? Is that fives on the other? Oh, it's just those. Six. No, not six. What? Oh, eight. Right, okay, so you guys are just throwing out random numbers, okay? Let's try to put some meaning to what you mean by eight, all right? So what you found is that the GCF is equal to two times two times two. You guys remembering this? Or no? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Do you, I, some, some of you are looking at this with fear and trepidation, which means you're kind of freaked out. All right, so uh, what is two times two times two? Eight. Okay, because two times two is four, times two is eight, all right? All right, times two is equal to eight. All right, so I got a GCF of eight. What do I do with that if I have a fraction of, what was it, five and then 256 over 1,000? Yep. What do you think I divide by, ladies and men who are genteel? Uh, either or, sirs. Yes? Uh, you can divide by two, 128 divided by uh, wait, 270. Wait, we just found the GCF, which was eight. Oh, okay. So we're going to divide by? Eight. Yes! Let's do that. I'm going to have you guys do that. Go, go, go. Go divide those numbers. Hey, so how's it going? This is Mr. Shakar again. Uh, we were just talking about how to find the greatest common factor of a number like five and 256 thousandths. So we have to go ahead and can, we decided that the greatest common factor was eight. We're dividing both the numerator and the denominator by eight, which gives us uh, 32 over 125. Since that is the case, then we go ahead um, and say we have 5 and 32 125 ths And that is, since 8 was the greatest common factor, this cannot be reduced further. All right, so moving on. Uh, I then did an example with uh, the students in which we started out with a number like 10 and 65 hundredths. We rewrote it as a fraction, as 10 and 65 hundredths. We decided that a number 5 could go into both. Now, we didn't decide that was the GCF. We just said, hey, it goes into both. Let's give it a try. We went ahead and we divided it out, and we found that it reduced down to 10 and 13 twentieths. At 10 and 13 twentieths, we realized that it could no longer be reduced, and so it was in simplest form, which was great. Uh, after that, we took a number, and I'll just go ahead and put that up there. So we took a number, which was 9 and 735 thousandths, because we have tenths place, hundredths place, thousandths place. Went ahead, uh, divided, we put it 735 over 1,000, and we didn't know what was the greatest common factor. We just said, hey, we know that the number 5 goes into 735, and the number 5 goes into 1,000. And the reason we knew that was because it ended in a 5, and it ended in a 0, and that's the divisibility rule for 5s. So we divided that out, and we ended up with an answer of 9 and 147 two hundredths. Okay? So the idea that we came to was that not, uh, 735 divided by 5 was 147, and 1,000 divided by 5 was 200. And our final answer was 9 and 147 two hundredths. Hey, thanks so much, and have a great day.